ο άνθρωπος του Θεού. Ε, the man of God. Man of God uh, is a new film. Μια πολύ ενδιαφέρουσα ταινία που αναφέρεται στον βίο και την πολιτεία του Αγίου Νικταρίου σε μια διεθνή παραγωγή α, και βεβαίως ε, ε, έχουμε την χαρά και την τιμή να έχουμε σήμερα μαζί μας την Γιολένα Πόποβα. Γιολένα, καλημέρα. Καλημέρα, Γιολένα Πόποβιτς. Popovich. It's like a Greg, like a Greg Popovich. That's like okay. a famous basketball coach. Yolena Popovich yeah, no. και τον Αλέξανδρο Πότερ. Αλέξανδρο. Hello, hello. How are you? Hi, uh, Dimitris. Fine. How are you? Thank you. Uh, ε, να πούμε δύο λόγια για την ε, ε, ταινία μαζί μας. Έχουμε και την συνεργάτη μας, τη δόκτωρα Δέσποινα Φεντούλη. Ε, ah. Η Γιολένα Πόποβα είναι... Ε, Δέσποινα, καλημέρα, καλώς όρισες. Καλημέρα. Γελένα and Alexander, welcome to Cosmos FM and thank you for being us with us today. Να πούμε... Thank you for having us. Ότι η Γελένα και ο Αλέξανδρος βρίσκονταν στη Νέα Υόρκη πριν από λίγες μέρες για την προβολή της ταινίας, το preview, όπως λέμε, εδώ στην Αμερική. Ε, μια ε, ενδιαφέρουσα προβολή. Εκεί ήταν και η Δέσποινα Φεντούλη, εκεί ήταν και ο δικός μας, ο Άλεξ Αγισιλάου, ο οποίος βεβαίως ε, όσοι από εσάς τον ξέρετε, ξέρετε ότι ασχολείται με τηλεόραση, ασχολείται και με κινηματογράφο. Ε, είναι περισσότερο τη εικόνα, αλλά είναι και του ήχου και είναι χαρά μας που τον έχουμε και αυτόν. Ε, βεβαίως η Γιολένα είναι η σεναριογράφος και η α, ε, σκηνοθέτης α, της ε, ταινίας α, ε, και η παραγωγός. Παραγωγός είναι και ο Αλέξανδρος Πότερ. Ε, να πούμε δύο λόγια για την ταινία Δέσποινα. So, as described on the, official, on, on the official synopsis of the film, exiled unjustly, convicted without trial, slaughtered without cause. Man of God, which in Greek is O Anthropos to Theou, depicts the trials and tribulations of Saint Nectarius of Aegina as he bears the unjust hatred of his enemies while preaching the word of God. Και βεβαίως ο Άρης Σερβετάλης είναι ο πρωταγωνιστής ε, της ενδιαφέρουσας αυτής της ταινίας η οποία θα προβληθεί ε, στις ε, 21 Μαρτίου και στις 28 σε 800 ε, κινηματογραφικές αίθουσε εδώ στις Ηνωμένες Πολιτείες Αμερικής. Uh, I would like to welcome uh, Yolena and Alexandro uh, who are now in Arizona And uh, this interview uh, is being recorded uh, via Zoom, and uh, hopefully we're going to uh, have it on Facebook in a few days. Hello from Arizona. Hello. <laughs> so uh, tell us uh, how you came up with this idea, Yolena. Uh, the interesting thing is I never had an idea uh, to make a film about uh, Saint Nectarius or, or any other saint for that matter. Uh, I love reading about saints. I'm, I'm part of the church. That's something that it's personal to me and I, I uh, for my soul, for my mind, but I never thought of making a film about a saint. Uh, when I, until I read a, a story about him in 2012, I just picked up a book when I was in Belgrade, uh, thinking there would be a, a, probably a nice story. I heard about him. I heard he was a wonderful saint. I didn't know anything about him. I, I bought a book, and then when I read his story, I was, like, very much shaken inside out. Uh, clearly, there were some parallels to his story, and, and uh, somewhere on some level, my father's story, my story, because of, um, because of the unjust prosecution, Uh, that he endured because my father was somebody who was unjustly prosecuted. As a matter of fact, he was uh, 
uh, one of the leading civil engineers in the country at the time was Yugoslavia. And he had a, a position, obviously, in the company. They were building roads and what, what else they were doing, civil engineers do. And uh, but he was beloved by people and not liked by the by his colleagues in the in in the leading positions because he wasn't willing to compromise and do unethical things and uh, uh, so therefore they had to find a way to get rid of him. So the way they did it, they waited for there was one day when it was extremely windy while he was working on on the highway. And uh, they knew that he was not going to compromise any workers uh, or risk anybody's life. So they told him this has to be finished today. And uh, in order for the job to be finished, somebody had to climb 30 meters high on the pole uh, and basically put his life at, at risk. And he said, I'm not going to be responsible for anybody's life. So that was enough of a cause finally for them to bring him to court, to bring six false witnesses and to get rid of him from his position all because he was just and unwilling to steal and cheat and uh, abuse people below him. So uh, therefore, uh, that's, um, uh, that's a serious parallel, as you can imagine, to my, uh, his, the story of St. Nectarius, the story of my father, who at the time had passed away. Uh, I haven't even seen him for 10 years before he passed away. I was in the United States. I... Uh, I was one of those immigrants that took me 18 years to get my uh, papers straightened out and the citizenship. So I ended up not seeing him, uh, but uh, going to one year of his uh, funeral re uh, memorial service. And that's where I bought a book about St. Nectarius. And clearly when I read the book and having my father in my mind so closely at that point, and resonated to such extent that I felt that uh, I could personally uh, put uh, honest honesty in his story, and and bring it to close to people's hearts and make it as real as possible. So people, regardless of their faith or or ethnic background, uh, they can identify with this man who was unjustly uh, prosecuted and how he endured his this injustice and and how he chose this incredible love and forgiveness. Uh, to find peace and to be victorious at the end, which is ultimately what I feel is relevant nowadays, especially in the times that we live in. So it was a very personal uh, yeah. thing. Uh, it was um, uh, an urge that you had because of the unjust treatment uh, of your uh, late father and the parallels yeah. in the life works and miracles of St. Nectarius, uh, uh, the bishop of Pentapolis, who uh, posthumously was honored by the Orthodox Church as a saint, uh, was canonized as a saint. That's correct. He was canonized in 1961 uh, uh, as a saint. After thousands of miracles that he has already performed during his life and after his repose. Um, uh, that's a very interesting uh, story, what uh, you told us. Uh, and um, uh, after reading uh, about uh, Senectarius, you decided uh, to do your uh, uh, movie. It's your first film, right? No, actually, it's a second film. I've done one film. Uh, it's called L.A. Superheroes. It was a totally different subject matter. It was a satire, uh, uh, drama, comedy satire on, on uh, Los Angeles and life in L.A. So it was definitely a lighter subject in some ways. Uh, but it was a good experience. Uh, I, I directed it, I wrote it, and I starred in that one. So that was extremely, I think that was a fantastic experience for me. So... I think I was ready to then dwell into something a little more uh, complicated and serious after that. And I'm grateful that I had a chance to do it. As you know, in, a, in independent filmmaking, most talented people don't get that chance. And I feel that St. Nectarius had something to do with it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so um, uh, you had the opportunity to do uh, uh, this as a second uh, film in your career as uh, an independent uh, producer. And uh, Alexandre, how you came up and tell us a few words about your experience as a producer 
uh, of this film, Alexandros Potter. Yes. Hi. So it's a it's a good question. Um, some people may know, but uh, I am married to Yelena, so we're we're a couple. Um, uh, so there there are challenges there, uh, but there are also benefits, I would say. Um, so you know, I, I my my background is is film finance and film distribution, and and so um, I've I've sort of lent a hand in in uh, putting the film together um, with Elena, and uh, so we've been we've been working together on this uh, from the beginning, really, and um, so it's been a journey. It's been an incredible journey, and and I've gone to to get to know. Uh, Saint Nectarius, I would say on a different level, um, just you know, from the experience of going through uh, the production and the pre-production and post-production, and then really the the amazing sort of feedback and and reactions from people that have seen the film um, and who have shared their their feelings about it. And uh, their emotions, and what 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 this film really does, and how it helps people. Because I think this was really the intention of Yelena. It was is is for this film and this story and and the saint to help people and touch people's hearts. Um, uh, Vespina. Yeah. Um, uh, you have the next I, question. I would like to ask Yelena, uh, according to us. 2020 study by the Center for the Study of Women in Television and Film at San Diego State University, uh, the percentages of women directing top grossing films increased, uh, while the overall percentages of women working in key behind the scenes roles remain relatively stable. And I'd like to ask your experience, your personal experience as a woman director. Uh, I must say that uh... I um, I felt so close to this story, and this meant so much to me that I, I didn't. I, I personally, as a, as a woman, and I can share this with other women. I I don't I don't feel inferior in any shape or form <laughs> because uh, I'm a female. Even if somebody has a problem, that's their problem. You know that this is this is how I see things, and I I was very empowered uh, by the story. And and ironically, this story. Uh, also, I feel empowers women because uh, St. Nectarius uh, uh, built a monastery uh, with women together. And there was, uh, there was some unjust prosecution also because of that. But he was an example of somebody who didn't uh, discriminate between uh, 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 female or male or, or, or any kind of gender issue or... or, or or, or skin color or ethnic background. He was somebody who was really spiritually very developed and, and he felt comfortable around everybody. And I must say that a lot of women have participated in this film and made it happen. Like my distributor uh, in, um, in Greece, uh, uh, Irini Suganidu, uh, and all From the- Feel all Good the, Entertainment. Feel Good Entertainment, all the, all the girls in the meeting. Mm -hmm. and this was a very important meeting is that they were the ones that believed in this. And I always said that, that for some reason, like almost like Sanitarius wanted a lot of women to be part of this project. And I felt really comfortable. There were a lot of women on the set, which also made me uh, uh, very comfortable. It would be awkward to be just surrounded only by men. And, 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 uh, and I, felt, I felt really good. And, and, and both, everybody was really dedicated to this project from their heart. And it felt felt really good. I mean, my my script supervisor was a female, obviously costume designer, and and a lot of people, uh, assistants of a, of a of a DP. There were a lot of. It was very. It was very well it balanced. It was very well so. balanced, and and it felt extremely comfortable. And I and I felt really good. You know, everybody showed uh, I, I must say a lot of respect and and, uh, and and love for this project. So it was it was it was a good experience for me. It was Thank you very much. an intro. An international production, uh, of course, uh, the filming was done in Greece and uh, it was completed in 2021. Uh, Kostas Labropoulos, Igor Nola, uh, and the two of you are the producers, the director... I, I, of I have to... Dimitris, sorry, I want to correct you on that. Just, um, it's actually 
Maria Yachnaki, myself and Yelena are the producers. Kostas Lambropoulos is an executive producer. Um, and uh, yes, it, it was produced in Greece, exactly. And, and uh, yes. And of course, uh, the uh, uh, scenario, uh, the writing uh, and the direction belongs to Yelena. Uh, photographia, photography, Panagiotis Vasilakis, Mondaz, Labis Karalabidis, uh, the beautiful music belongs to his big new Preissner. And uh, tell us, besides Ari Servetalis and um, uh, Mickey Rourke, uh, who are uh, the other actors and actresses, mostly Greek uh, in the cast, right? Most of them. Yes, yes, mostly uh, we, we decided to go for somewhat of a majority of the cast was Greek because we uh, and, and, you know, if, if this wasn't, a, I believe, an international project, I probably would have just made it in Greek with all the Greek actors. Right. But because uh, we I always felt that this film should go uh, beyond Greece and, and the story could be shared with uh, everyone. It's a very universal story. We had a uh, couple of international actors like uh, Mickey Rourke, Alexander Petrov, uh, but everybody else was, was Greek. And, and I, I had a, I mean, it, I was very, uh, it was very important for me to choose the right actors for, for the right roles. I was very lucky to have an opportunity to work with such uh, incredible talent of actors. I mean, if you look at the, all the actors that are in the movie, they're, they're incredibly talented and 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 uh, so, I mean, I, I I'm sure people in Greece they know them quite well. Cariofilia Karambeti, uh, Christos Lulis, uh, uh, and many others. Yanis Stankoglu uh, and many many others were were part of this film, and and we had really strong cast in in Greece. And and apart from that, I again I'm going to emphasize I had a great time working with everybody. So that's that's for me was uh, the the best part of filmmaking on, on, on some level. Um, the, um, uh, the film approaches uh, the life uh, and um, the uh, tribulations of uh, uh, Senectarius, uh, the Bishop of uh, Pentapolis, and his um, unjust uh, treatment by the Church. And... Uh, uh, does not uh, shy of the corruption that faces the Orthodox Church and um, uh, as all organized religion. So even though you're uh, a faithful Orthodox Christian, you didn't uh, shy of criticizing indirectly the Church uh, uh, and recognizing corruption in its um, uh, midst, uh, Yolena. Yes, I didn't shy in telling the truth. This is this film had to be told truthfully, and part of his story uh, is uh, that yes, he was uh, uh, unjustly treated by uh, some of his colleagues in within the church. Uh, yeah, uh, what, what can I say? The the you know you if for, in order to make a film to affect somebody, you have to you have to be honest. Uh, my goal was to criticize, uh, not particularly the church, to criticize the establishment. This film very much uh, goes against the establishment uh, in any kind of organization. It could be church, it could be politics, it could be uh, education, it could be any sphere of existence. It criticizes those that abuse their power, uh, that they're supposed to be there to help people and to lead people, but instead they hurt people. And this is this is who this film is criticizing. Uh, so it's not just criticizing the church. I just want to emphasize that the film is very much geared. One of the main premises of this film, and I and I and that's why it's it's um, it's made the way it was is that the desire, the unhealthy desire for power and lust for power. Is the is the, is basically the seed of, of corruption of our souls and our world nowadays. That, that's that's uh, that very much uh, uh, plays in this movie. So yes, that was. Uh, but you know, as you can see, it uh, we also have grace in the church and and God. So uh, we don't have angels in the church. We know that. So we have to. To me, I'm somebody who has a lot of faith. 
I never, I never, um, I don't think people should so much focus on what people do. Uh, but yes, I, we always pray that uh, in any organization, especially within the church, we have uh, good people and uh, people that can help people. That, that's like St. Tarius. He's a great example of that. Okay. Uh, we have, um, uh, tell us a few uh, words about the um, uh, distribution of uh, the film here in the United States, uh, Alexandra, and uh, uh, beyond, since it's an international production and is going to play yes. uh, uh, starting March uh, the 21st. Correct, yes. As you mentioned it earlier on at the beginning of the show, the film uh, is releasing on March 21st and on March 28th. So it's it's basically playing two nights only uh, at 7 p.m. in 175 cities, 46 states, 800 screens across the U.S. So it's very accessible. People can find a cinema near them. They can either Google, just type in Man of God, or they can go to fathomevents.com, uh, type in and find Man of God, and then type in their city or a zip code, and they'll find a cinema near them playing the film on those dates. Tickets are available right now on sale and they're available uh, to be uh, purchased in advance. Uh, so I encourage everybody to to get their tickets now and um, to, to, to enjoy this beautiful film. Um, and uh, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Dr. Despina Afeduli for the last uh, question. Um, Greece and Serbia traditionally share historical, cultural, and religious ties. And I know that um, you produced a film in Greece, and so I would like to ask you, uh, how was your experience um, producing this film in Greece, and to what extent is it difficult to promote a religious theme through art at international level? Uh, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'm sure Yelena will jump in as well, but um, I, I think there's definitely, um, we, we've had a great experience. First of all, what I'll say is in Greece, there's, there's a great program right now for uh, the cash rebate, which means that if you spend $100, you get $40 back uh, from uh, Ecome, which is the audiovisual center in Greece. Uh, and they've done a fantastic job at putting that together in the last couple of years. Uh, and it's up and running and fully functional. And um, um, and then in terms of in terms of production with the crews um, and and the production service company, you know, that everybody's been extremely professional um, and very talented. Actually, there's there's a there's a great uh, pool of talent in Greece, which I think is is still not uh, fully tapped into um and um i think on 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 your last point about uh, a religious film and how difficult that is there were a lot of challenges and and you know early on um there were certain programs i won't point them out here right now but there, there were certain programs that because even though the film had uh, all commercially speaking, we had all the pro we had all the all the boxes checked. We had the talent attached. We you know we had the financing. We had we had all of the elements that um, certain programs required uh, to help with the funding. Um, mm -hmm. Because it was a religious film, uh, they could not sign off on it. Yeah, so I, yeah, and I would like to do if you don't mind jump in here. I yeah. kept saying, and it's true, I did not make a religious movie. I approached this film, and that was the trick. When I saw the story, I was very much attracted to the story because I felt, yes, it has a religious theme. He happened to be a, a person, man that I was making a film about. It happens to be a metropolitan of the church, but. But I, I did not try to make a religious movie. I did not want to make a propaganda of any sort. I was trying to make the film on uh, to really approach it on a very human level. And that's how a film is made. And that's why anybody can really watch it. So even though we were saying that, and, and they could see it in the script, because when, when um, uh, Irini uh, from Feel Good uh, read the script, for example, and when we had the first meeting, she goes like, 
well, this is not a religious film. I said, well, yes, it's not a religious film. That's correct. She, she was able to, it is about a religious subject. I, I believe that spirituality will be present in case that we really focus on the truth and we are as honest as we can be. And then that's where the, that's where the, the this, uh, that's where the creativity and beauty comes out is from the honesty and the truth. But yes, to just to add a little bit. So people were slightly confused there. They just always like to think, oh, it's only religious film and, and who's going to watch this? Only a few grandmothers with a few grandchildren. Well, they were wrong. It was a, a lot of young people, as you see what happened in Greece, they called it phenomenon. Watch the movie. And not only that, this film has been accepted worldwide, even by people who know nothing about orthodoxy and being distributed. Because again, the theme is very universal. Uh, it's a universal story. And the approach to this film was not religious. It was it was human. So, so I think that that's... Uh, uh, and I think, by the way, that people were wrong. That was my opinion as a producer. And I always thought that for many years, and Alexandrus can testify to this, that I said, you know, more and more in this world that we live in, we're going to need films that, that you feel that you can get inspired by. And you feel, hopefully, if it's done well enough, you feel there is a healing process, something, films that give you hope. And I think those kind of films are, are are needed right now. It's the right time for that. And I feel like there are going to be many more, not just my film. And I hope it, it'll be a good example and an inspiration for others to, to bring those kind of stories to the surface, because I think they're needed. Because unfortunately, nowadays, uh, there are all sorts of genre out there. I know people like it, but unfortunately... Uh, horror stories and thrillers we have them in real life right now we watch them on the news every day so we need uh, we need now positive energy we need hope and we need healing and with that word uh, the word of uh, hope and healing we end uh, this uh, interview with uh, Yolena Popovich the director of Man of God the movie and uh, Alexandra Spotter, the executive director. I would like to thank both of them, as well as uh, uh, Dr. Zespina Feduli, uh, the sociologist and journalist, and our uh, uh, co-worker here at Cosmos FM. Ευχαριστώ πολύ. Καλή επιτυχία. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. Ευχαριστούμε πολύ. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Elena, thank We you, wish you success. Uh, uh, and as we said, the uh, filming in about 800 uh, screens around the United States, uh, uh, the screening is going to take place March the 21st and March the 28th. 21 and 28 Martiu. Nasta kala, kali sinechia. Κόσμος FM, η πιο ισχυρή εγκεφαλική τροφή.